Okay, let's work a couple pathways problems, 2.98 and 2.99, because both of these deal with a similar concept. And that is all about naming so-called binary covalent compounds. Now that sounds you know, kind of confusing and scientific perhaps, but let's explain what we mean by binary covalent compounds. First off, they're covalent, they're not ionic, they're linked by covalent bonds. And covalent compounds, remember what, how we can recognize them, is that we're going to be bonding non-metals together. So two or more non-metals bonded together, it's covalent linkages, no metals present here. Okay? They're binary covalent compounds, meaning they're made up of two elements, hence binary. And there's a series of rules for naming these types of compounds. These rules are different than the ionic compounds. So again, when you're naming things, you always need to start by asking, is it ionic? Is it covalent? What am I dealing with here, okay? For the binary covalent compounds, the rules are as follows. Figure out which element has a lower group number. That's the element that's going to go first in the name. If you run into a situation where the elements are from the same group, the element with the higher period that's further towards the bottom of the periodic table gets to go first, okay? A really good example of that while we're on the topic is this molecule, SO2. It's a colorless gas, a pollutant gas in the atmosphere. It's produced when fuels burn. If a fuel contains sulfur, sulfur dioxide is produced, SO2. If you look up sulfur and oxygen in the periodic table, they're right on top of one another. Okay, oxygen's higher than the sulfur's right below it. Because sulfur is in the higher period, its name goes first. And as a consequence, we call this sulfur dioxide. Okay, so that's an example where you have to make that distinction, okay? But beyond those two rules, we're going to use the IDE ending for the second element. Notice I already did that, right? Dioxide, IDE. And we're also going to use these numerical prefixes to do to denote how many copies of each molecule or uh, each atom we've got. So in this case, note the di, di for two, tri for three, tetra for four, penta, so on and so forth, right? Mono for one. Now you say, well, why isn't there a mono for monosulfur dioxide? Right? It's just sulfur dioxide. It's the name. Well, for the first element usually do not use mono. We do for the second element, though, like carbon monoxide, for instance. Right? CO is carbon monoxide, but carbon dioxide, CO2, is carbon dioxide. Okay, so we, we only use that mono for the second element all the time. Okay? All right, so let's try our hand at this, these problems then, using what we now know. <coughs> so 298. You're told that we're going to make a compound from sulfur and fluorine. Two atoms of sulfur, four atoms of fluorine are going to be in this compound. And I look at this and I say, okay, sulfur and fluorine, these are nonmetals. This is going to be a binary covalent compound. And because of that, I've got to follow these rules. So what's the next thing that I've got to figure out then? You've got to start to think where sulfur and fluorine is on the periodic table, right? Well, Fluorine is up in the top right corner. Sulfur is below that and to the left. Okay? Fluorine is in that halogens, group 7A. Sulfur is in group 6A. So it looks to me that sulfur is the element with the lower group. Right? So I'm going to write that element first, and then I'm going to write fluorine. talking about a molecular compound here that's made two atoms of sulfur and four of fluorine. So I write those as subscripts. This will be the molecular formula for this particular compound. But that's not the trick here, because what we want to do is come up with a name. Now we know the sulfur should come first. And we know the fluorine component of the name should come second. We also know that in our rules, we're supposed to change to the IDE ending, or the second material. 
So perhaps I'll just try it. Bases right now, okay? Now I'm going to write blanks there, because we might need to fill in the blanks. If I just say sulfur fluoride, I'm making some progress. Maybe I know what elements are involved, but I have not specified how many copies of each. I need to specify how many copies of each are present in my molecule using those numerical prefixes like mono, di, and so on and so forth. So I look at this compound and I say, well, I got two copies of sulfur. Maybe I should call it disulfur. Four copies of the fluorine. The prefix for that is T E T R A, tetra. So disulfur tetrafluoride what I could call this compound. And the element goes first, has the lower group number. All right, so that's problem 298. What about 299? Here we're told that there's a compound between chlorine and oxygen. Two chlorine atoms, one oxygen atom. So what do we do? Well, we simply follow the rules, okay? I say chlorine and oxygen, where are these located on the periodic table? It turns out they're in the same columns as the, the previous example. Chlorine is right below fluorine, and oxygen is to the left of fluorine, okay? So because the oxygen has the lower group number, I'm going to write that one first, and then I'll write the chlorine. So OCl2 would be the chemical formula for this stuff, okay? But we want the name. We want the name. So because the oxygen was first, I'm going to start with that. And I'll write the root name for the other substance, switching to the IDE ending. So I'm kind of starting here with oxygen chloride. But does that tell the whole story? It doesn't because I have not specified how many copies of each. So since it's OCl2, I guess I could write mono-oxygen and then di-chloride, with the space being between the words, okay? But remember, for that first element, we typically do not use the prefix mono. As a result, I will call this molecule oxygen dichloride. Sometimes in the literature, you might hear this referred to as chlorine monoxide or something like that, but that actually doesn't follow the rules for nomenclature that your book um, describes. So I've chosen to um, work it in, in this way and just call it oxygen dichloride to be sure that we follow the rules. All right, so this is naming binary covalent compounds, very different than the ionic compounds we talked about earlier.